Hey guys, Dave from Scoggin Dickey Parts Center, and we have a hurricane warning in our warehouse. It feels kind of like it. It's a little bit muggy back here today, but uh, it's also not the rainy, thunderstormy kind of thing. It's actually this, the Direct Connection Mopar Hurricrate. It's uh, the Hurricane Inline 6. This is actually the Category 3, so it's actually the high output option that you have uh, as far as right now they i believe they only have that available in the ram 1500 uh, rho and i'm not for sure if it's in the wagoneer but either which way we've got it here and we're going to talk a little bit about it uh, direct connection offers two different levels for this at the moment they have the cat 1 and the cat 3 there's supposed to be a cat x which is supposed to be a thousand horsepower option but at the moment we haven't seen anything about it uh, supposedly they've been working on it. Um, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Uh, there's kind of a, a loss in competition, so to speak, with the drag pack options because we no longer have the Copos running. So it's just down to the drag pack and the uh, Cobra Jets. Yes, that's what they're called. Anyway, there's a lot of information on this. Uh, if you'll excuse me, I'm actually gonna look at some of the, some of the data that I wrote down. The Cat 1, for you guys that are probably just wanting to put a swap or swap this into something and just let it be, it's 420 horsepower, 468 pound-feet of torque. The Cat 3 is 550 horsepower and 531 pound-feet of torque. So the Cat 1 makes 22 PSI, the Cat 3 makes 26 PSI, uh, and there's differences between the two, but really the big thing about it is the fact that uh, this setup is really it doesn't look like it's really being leaned on. Uh, the, the turbo options are actually really close to a Garrett 28. Uh, it's a GT2871 thereabouts. For you guys that have, you know, followed through the Garrett lineup over the past few decades, you might remember the Garrett Disco Potato. Uh, it's a very well-proven uh, Garrett turbocharger used for motorsports and for performance options. This is just a continuation of it. It's really neat on the packaging for this one. So, you know, of course, we're moving away from the Hemis. We're moving away from superchargers. We're now moving back into a turbocharged era. And this one actually has twin turbos. So these are actually a clockwise and counterclockwise rotating uh, turbocharger setup. So it allows them to package this really, really nice and tight. And if you guys look at say the new Ram in the engine bay, there's tons of room on either side of this engine. You'll notice on the side of this, these aren't throttle bodies. These are actually your electronic wastegate controls, as well as it has electronic bypasses for your boost. So looking at this, for some of you guys, probably you're gonna be wondering, well, what are we gonna be able to do about tuning about it? Nothing at the moment, but we've seen other options where there's external controllers done by other people for other platforms. There's probably gonna be ways for you guys in the OE level to be able to make a little bit more boost without you know, having to tickle the keys on something. So this is a really nice and condensed package. It's, uh, it's also very lightweight. They're roughly 70 pounds lighter than your 5.7 or 6.4 Hemi which of course we understand those have got cast iron blocks. So there's a lot of the weight and density just right there. But there's a few other things that I wanna point out that are gonna be kind of neat uh, for you that have already followed along with the things with BMW and Toyota with the Supra and, and their inline six turbo lineups. There's gonna be some of this stuff that looks really, really similar uh, just because of the fact that, hey, it's the OEM stuff. They figure out things that work and it works good within the uh, you know production car parameters. So this is instead of like the EcoBoost where they use a uh, air to air intercooler, this is actually water to air intercooled. And so this has got a water to air intercooler stack on the side. These have twin inlets all the way through to a single inlet on the throttle body. The Cat 3 has a larger throttle body than the Cat 1. And then of course, this whole layout is really, really, like I said, dense, but I think it leaves a little bit of options or opportunity for the aftermarket to be able to lean on this one a little bit before even touching anything on the internals. So the intake, you could probably actually pull off adding a little bit of a, a spacer for secondary port injection. The Cat 1 and Cat 3, they're direct injected. 
The Cat 3 has, it's around 100 pounds an hour on the injector for that. Uh, for reference, an LT4 injector is just over 200 pounds an hour. So there, there's a lot of ceiling available for fueling as far as uh, DI is concerned. But of course, the injector design and body size and everything else can kind of negate that as well as the pump size on these engines. So, of course, this is relatively new. So we'll see how that progresses. We have friends like at Nostrum Energy that are probably waiting in the wings to be able to get their hands on an injector and pump. We'll see how that goes. So moving from just the induction side, uh, you know, like I said, you could probably move to a water to air intercooler setup that's, you know, larger, more efficient, route it a little bit differently and be able to make some, some really solid power. Of course, making all of this work properly is going to be all up to you. Uh, and whenever it comes down to running, this is also going to be up to you. Uh, if you guys were watching any of the stuff from Roadkill Nights, you'll probably realize that they weren't running an OEM controller. Uh, those were all MoTeC ECUs. And for our friends that are shouting M1 Army, yeah, you're right, M1 Army. And it's, it's not cheap. You're looking at a few, quite a few thousand dollars of just for the ECU, let alone the wiring. And, you know, if you know how to tune it, that's great. Uh, finding somebody that will do the calibration for you is also going to be expensive. So at the moment, we're waiting on uh, Mopar to bring out a controller for this. There might be some other options that pop out uh, as we work to, uh, to find some solutions. Because really, the end goal for this is for us to be able to put it on the dyno and test out components because we have a feeling that the Hurricane is going to be around for quite a few years, especially now that the manufacturers are going, oh crap, uh, the EV stuff isn't working out quite like they wanted to, um, which is great because it allows us to sell parts. So we're actually wanting to do some other options as far as adding, uh, you know, more robust components, uh, piston and rod combos, just to see how far this thing can go. Uh, maybe even figure out some other options as far as turbochargers are concerned, as well as maybe some fueling. So really, we really look forward to getting this on the dyno at some point in time, hopefully sooner than later, uh, because we expect this to show up in the later charger platform after they go through the first year with the EV setup. And hopefully we can actually get to, uh, you know, put this to the test on the dyno and on the track and uh, so, yeah, stay tuned. Keep an eye on our channel. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, uh, comment. I mean, really, what do you guys think about this versus what they had with the Hemi and the Hellcat? Uh, are you guys interested in something along these lines or the thousand horsepower option? Or do you just wish that we stuck with the Hemis and the, the Hellcats? Uh, I'm fine with the Hellcat. I'd love, I'd love to put it in my own car. So. There it is, the Cat 3. Uh, be sure to t stay tuned. Next week we'll have another tech video and we'll see you guys next time. So I talked about the electronic boost controllers. Going from here to there. We'll actually do this and show off the internal wastegate. Boop. Yeah. Okay. And then the boost bypass valve. Right there. Twin turb skis. The dual outlet to a water to air in a cooler. Beefy. Okay. All right. And then this little fella. So you got your outlet to your throttle body. Intake your 
direct injection fuel rails and in hectares down in there and this is your direct injection fuel pump right there it's covered in foam 